fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Oh, that Bobby is a boy of nine. He can really hit that line. He's the star because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Yes, it's a fact. Cheerios does give you real gold power. You see, Cheerios is made from oats, and every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body, help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. And Cheerios is so much fun to eat, with its distinctive O shape and its wonderful toasted oat flavor. So tomorrow morning and every morning, start the day right with a Cheerios breakfast. Then you'll hear people say, He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Amanda Lynn was not the raw bone, strong chin type of woman that came to mind when one spoke of a frontier wife and mother in the far west. To the contrary, Amanda was a short, rather plump woman with fair skin and delicate features, who men instinctively felt needed protection and care from the rougher things in life. Gruff six-foot Hiram Lynn had that same feeling at first, but years of marriage had proved to him that appearances were deceiving. At 12 years of age, Lucy showed many of her mother's traits. She, too, had a fearlessness and inward strength that belied her delicate appearance. One morning, Hiram noticed at breakfast that Lucy was eating hastily. He spoke to her gruffly. Now, see here, Lucy. Take your time. No reason to gulp your fiddles down like that. But I have to hurry, Daddy. I'm going to ride over the roundup with Patrick. He said I could. You're not going to do any such thing, Savvy. Those cattle get out of hand, it'll be downright dangerous. No, sir, you're staying right here, but in. Thanks, Hiram. The way you carry on, you think Texas is going to take Lucy to watch a bunch of Indians on the warpath. <laughs> you know Lucy's used to riding where the cattle are. Sure, but it's different when they you have to admit that Texas is mighty careful about Lucy when she's with it. Of course I admit it, Amanda, but then I... Then that means that you really have no objections to the child going with it this morning. No. Oh, golly, Jerry. Oh, I knew you didn't mean it about telling me I couldn't go. Oh, I had to hurry or Texas will leave without me. I know it'll be lots of fun. Now, hold on, Lucy. When I said... Now, sit down and finish your breakfast. Mm. That's just a look after, Lucy, so don't worry. Half an hour later, Cactus, the ranch foreman, and Lucy moved along one side of a wide, fertile valley where the cattle were being gathered into a large herd by the ranch hands. Oh, 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 oh. Now, look, Jerry, I have to get out there and keep them low cold waddies in hand. Well, I'm not afraid, Cassie. I'll wait for you. No, not here, you won't. I want you to ride up this slope to that cottonwood grove beyond there. Uh-huh. You can see the whole valley from up there, so you won't miss now a thing. I'll come up there for you later. All right, Cassie. Get up there. Get up there. Lucy rode up the slope while Cactus went to join the roundup. Reaching the grove on the top of the slope, Lucy stopped and dismounted. Whoa, baby, whoa. Her horse moved back through the grove, nibbling at the undergrowth. Suddenly, she heard a snort and squeal. Billy, what's the matter? Billy, come back. Come here, Billy. A 
But Billy, frightened by a reptile, galloped back through the grove without heeding her cries. Lucy, intent upon catching her horse, followed, first running as fast as she could, then as her wind gave out, continuing to walk in the direction he had gone. Finally, she came to a halt on the rim of a large gully. A small herd of cattle moved along the bottom of the gully, and Lucy sighed with relief as she saw a man wearing a sombrero riding in front of them. There's some dairy for us. And there's one of the men. Or maybe they can be Just as he started to call out, she gasped with surprise as she looked at the horseman riding behind the cattle. Three of them. They must be stealing some of our cattle. Why, well, I've got to go back and talk Captain. As Lucy turned, her eyes widened, and she clasped her hand over her mouth to stifle the gasp of fright that welled in her throat. A painted and feathered Indian stood staring at her with a tomahawk raised suggestively. Oh. Little squaw, not make noise. Go down path into gully. Amanda Lynn's firm training and the traits she had passed on to her little daughter were evident as Lucy, without a sound, walked in the direction the Indian pointed and started down a path into the gully with her savage captor close behind. As they went down the path, the Indian suddenly gave as a signal the wailing howl of a coyote. Oh! When they reached the bottom of the gully, the others had left the herd and were waiting. Okay. Hey, sir. Squaw. Little squaw watch from rim of gully. It's not good. What you do here alone, little girl? My, my horse ran away, and I followed him. Golly, you're an Indian, too. And you're feeding my body's cattle. I just know you are. You belong Lynn Spread? Yes. Yeah. My father owns it. Daddy and Cassius will be awful mad when they find out you stole cattle. You plenty brave, small squaw. Not good, you tell father. We take you Indian village. Talk with Big Chief. Oh, no. No, I want to go home. Me call Breed. Me take you on horse. You come village. Ute Lame! That afternoon in the hills, the Lone Ranger and Toffle were busy in their temporary camp, mending and polishing their riding gear. But the Lone Ranger was saying, There's been a lot of cattle rustling in this southwest territory, Tonto. So far, no one has been able to trail with these. Uh, no. Remember the report the Padre had from your friend, Chief Thundercloud? Ah. Chief Thundercloud sent message that Chief Blackhawk break away from pride. Him take small band brave right way three moons ago. Wouldn't surprise me to find out that Blackhawk and his braves are responsible for all the rustling that's been going on. Ah. Over here's something. He's warning us. See uh-huh. here, hope he's in the body. He looks down toward trail. Yes, I hear him now. One horse. Mm, that's right. Yeah, me see him. His horse was our rider. He takes a shot. Go get him. He from us. Get him up. Oh. A few minutes later, Tonto returned, leading Lucy's riderless horse. Oh, John. Oh, pilot, that. Oh, well, easy stuff. Did easy you stop. catch sight of anyone on foot, Tonto? No. I mean, look, not see anyone. The rider may have been hurt. You will backtrack the horse's tail and try to find the owner. Here's Silver. Bring the other horse along, Tonto. Let's go. Easy, silly. Easy, Tonto. Oh, Silver. Come on, come on. Lucy's horse had cut down the slope some distance from the gully to which he had wandered. So that when backtracking his trail, the lone ranger and Toto didn't catch sight of the trail left by the rustled cattle. Meantime, Cactus and a few of the men who were ready to go back to the bunkhouse rode up the slope from the valley to meet Lucy. As they approached the grove, Cactus spoke uneasily. That's funny, I don't see Lucy anywhere. We'll search around and see if we can find her. Or at least pick up a trail. She looks like her. As the small group rode up the slope toward the grove, the lone ranger and Toto entered the cottonwood from the other side, leading Lucy's horse. As they approached the spot from which the horse had bolted, Cactus and the others came over the rise a short distance away. The masked man and Indian were looking at the ground as they rode, so that in spite of a warning whinny from the great horse Silver, Cactus and the others had already seen them and rode toward them with drawn guns. Look, you must have it. Let do as he says, Those are the Look out, man. Oh, 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 o
Well, who? By thunder, they've got Lucy's horse. Where's the little girl, mister? If you don't speak up fast, I'll drill you right now. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. How about your family? Do you all like different cereals for breakfast? Here's a suggestion. Take a pack of Cheerios, take a pack of Trix, take a pack of Jets, take a pack of Kick and Wheaties, too. The choice is up to you with the very pack of Pick a Pack package. It's Pick a Pack, the all-family cereal package with the easy opening top. And inside, individual servings of five wonderful cereals. Wheaties, breakfast of champions, Cheerios, the cereal shaped like little O's, new high puff kicks, food for action, sugar jack, triple treat of sugar, oats, and wheat, and Trix, the fruit-flavored gay color cereal. Five delicious favorites, all in individual packs that feel in freshness. Easy to open, easy to dispose of. Next time, take a pack of Cheerios, take a pack of Trix, take a pack of Jets, take a pack of Kit and Wheaties, too. The choice is up to you with the very pack of Pick a Pack package. Now to continue. Taking the drawn guns in the hands of Cactus and the four men with him, the Lone Ranger realized that he and Toto were in immediate danger. As he hesitated, Cactus repeated, I said, speak up fast or get a bullet. Now, where's the girl? We know nothing about the girl you mentioned. He's lying. Cactus, make him kill the girl. Better yet, we'll drill the both of them. Then we'll backtrack on until we find him. Yeah, right. The Lone Ranger signaled Silver with a slight movement of his heel. The intelligent horse suddenly sprang forward, shoving right into the group with two spares, glaring and kicking at the other horses, and sending them into a frenzied turmoil. For a moment, Cactus and the others fought to control their frightened horses as they bucked and whirled to escape the nipping teeth and sharp, raking hoofs of the great white stallion. When the men again turned their attention to the masked man and Indian, they found themselves staring at a double brace of guns. Drop your guns, all of you. That's me, that's you. No, you won't. Oh, my head. I've got those guns. Toto. Oh, God, he's too fast for his boys. Better stop him. You won't listen to explanations about my mask. But I repeat, we're not outlaws. We know nothing about the girl who rode that horse over there. Let's get going, Toto. One, two, three. Now, come on, get your guns quick. Then we'll trail those two, and the next time we'll shoot on fire. Come on, hurry up. Cactus and three of the men started trailing the Lone Ranger and Toto, while the cowboy, whose hand had been nicked by the masked man's bullet, went to the ranch house. Hiram Lynn had just dismounted at the corral when the cowboy rode in and told him what had happened. I thunder, I knew something would happen. I knew it. Now you go in the house and get your hand fixed. I'll round up the rest of the men and follow after Cactus and the others. Right. I'll find that masked cowboy and make him tell what he knows about Lucy if I have to flay him alive to do it. Him and that Indian with him are clever and quick. Well, they won't be when we get done with him. All right, rest you men, follow me. A few minutes later, the cowboy related the story to Mrs. Lynn as she bandaged his hand. Amanda, in her calm and determined way, left the ranch house and rode to the grove where Lucy had been last seen, deciding to try to trail her little girl. The Moon Ranger and Toto, having used clever means to cover their trail, headed back to the grove when they were sure they had lost their pursuers. They came upon Amanda suddenly, but to their surprise, she showed no fear as they pulled to a stop before her. Oh, no, 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 no. We've come to help. Please don't be afraid of us. I'm not afraid. And if you come to help, I'll be grateful, Mass Man. Well, we're not outlaws, as the men from the Lynn Ranch seem to think. I'm Amanda, Hiram Lynn's wife. I've been thinking about the men meeting you here. Yes? Well, it struck me that you wouldn't come back here bringing Lucy's horse if you'd been the cause of her disappearance. <sighs> Men just don't stop to think sometimes. I admire your courage and your reasoning, Mrs. Lynn. Believe me, we'd like nothing better than to find your daughter for you. That's why we've come back again. I believe you. But there's danger. Hiram and Cassius and the others are following your trail. I hope we've covered our trail. I see. Well, I found some of Lucy's footmarks. Good. Cut and I'll follow them until... I'm going with you. 
Shall we get started now? Why, of course. Come on, come up to town. Once they'd picked up the trail, it was a simple matter for the Lone Ranger and Toto to follow it. When they reached the gully, Toto pointed out where Lucy had been put on a horse. Toto walked away a short distance, then returned to report. What did you find, Toto? A small herd of cattle go through gully, driven by Indians. You see Mark and Indian ponies. What do you suppose they'll do? Keep up your courage, Mrs. Lynn. I'm sure we'll find Lucy unharmed. Will you be willing now to go back? Because you're, you're afraid of what we might really find, is that it? Oh, no. You can help by going back and finding your husband and the men. Have them follow the trail left of the herd. We'll go ahead and find the hidden village. All right, I'll go. Good. Tell them to hurry. We'll need their help. And don't worry, Mrs. Lynn. Try to find the men quickly. Adios. Good boy. Get up there. That trail-looking woman has more courage than most men, Toto. Let's hurry. There's no time to lose. Lucy isn't as safe as I tried to make her mother believe. He's just going to be It's got easy, fellas. Black Hawk and his band, consisting of ten braves, had put up wigwams in a secluded hollow far back in the hills. The wigwams were in a large circle, and in one of them, Lucy lay with her hands and feet tied. The little girl had tried to be brave, but as dusk began to fall, she finally gave way to stifled sobbing. I won't be afraid. I won't. Toto knew the tricks of Indians. He and the Lone Ranger had been able to follow the cattle in spite of Breed's efforts to throw off pursuit. They finally located the village and stopped in the shadows. Oh, by oh, 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 oh. As the two men stood looking over the village, Toto pointed out that because it was a marauding band of Indians, there were no dogs with them, thus safeguarding their approach against detection. They noted that about eight braves were gathered near a campfire in some sort of powwow, while a single brave at each end of the hollow acted as guard. The Lone Ranger counted ten in all. Finally, he outlined a plan. Toto, there are six wigwams in that circle. No one seems to be guarding them. I'll go to three, you take the other three. Ah. The shadows are just deep enough to help us. Keep up behind each wigwam. Make a small hole with your knife so you can look in. But be careful. You see the girl? Slip the back of the wigwam and bring her out. Follow the door. In the wigwam, Lucy shivered as the leering face of Breed looked in. He's plenty angry with small score. Oh, please, ask him to let me go. Please. Him say it's not good let you go. Him say maybe make trade with Apache. Get good horse for squaw slave. Oh, no. No. I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> you not go home. Chief Blackhawk spoken. Tears not help. Me go now. Through the front opening, he grabbed his guns, ready for instant action. He saw Toto surrounded by Black Hawk's braves. Black Hawk was speaking. One of one of me braves come to spy on village. Him friends be thunder. Go trail on that The Lone Ranger saw the group move back as two braves sprang forward, each grasping one of Toto's arms, holding them straight out in a vice-like grip. They turned Toto so that his profile was visible from the wigwam. Then the chief drew a knife and held it high as he stood in front of the masked man's friend. Two great spirits, I send this brave as offering. Yeah. The Lone Ranger knew the time had come to act. The chief stood facing Toto with his side for the masked man. The Lone Ranger realized he and Toto were two against the chief and ten braves. 
But as the knife darted downward, the Lone Ranger fired. And the masked figure, ready to die fighting to save his friend, sprang forward, both guns blazing. When at that moment, a welcome sound came to the ears of the masked man and his Indian friend. Hiram Lynn, leading 20 or more men, galloped into the village with guns in action. Within a short time, the fight was over, and Black Hawk and his ten braves were thoroughly cowed. By thunder, I could see you heading right into that yelping band of savages as we rode into the village. You sure got a lot of courage, mister. Right. You couldn't have held out long. Oh, 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 down you go. Uh, here she is, right where you said, mister. For the masked man, baby. We were going to make you be a slave with the Apache. Mm, heaven forbid. Hey, here comes Amanda. She was waiting on the edge of the woods. Mama. Mama, please, little girl. Yes, he takes after her ma. Amanda told us about you and the Indian Tonto, mister. Sorry for causing you trouble. And thanks for finding Lucy in the cattle. Well, that's all right. Frankly, you're lucky to have a woman like Mrs. Lynn as your wife. Women like her have given men the courage and fortitude to come west and stay here. We'll go now. Guard these Indians. We'll notify the troopers to come after them. All right, let's go, Tonto. Adios. Adios. Darling, I like him. I know, son. I admire him greatly. He has great courage and understanding. Of well, in spite of the mask, I knew instinctively he could be trusted. Mm. Well, I reckon women are a lot smarter than men when it comes to judging folks. I wonder who he is. I asked the Indian Tonto, and when he told me, I knew that was the one man he could bring our Lucy back to. He's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Kendall Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.